This morning, I had a meeting with an attorney to get my will updated. My wife and I had our last wills and testaments written about 20 years ago. And now that my kids are older, it was time to get them updated. Making sure you have a will is something nobody really likes to think about. It's, it's one of those later things, things we all know we need to do, but we always find a way to put it off. We always tell ourselves we'll do it later. And it got me thinking about other later things that we have in our lives. And you know what's a later thing that most of us should be doing now and aren't doing? Networking. Of course, you knew I would say that. And we all know that we need to network and we always say we should be doing it and we put it off and we put it off and we never really get to it. And then when we need it, just like a will, say if you were to die unexpectedly, uh, it's too late. Uh, once you, you have something like that, one of these later things and you put it off, you get to the point where it's too late. It's, it's, it's something you can't really do a lot about once, um, once you really need it. Now, obviously, networking is something that's not life or death. So it's not like a will where, you know, if you die without one, you know, your, your uh, family is going to be really stuck. But uh, networking is one of those things that I never did. I was one of those people who said, I'll do it later. That was how I kind of thought about it way back in 2012. And I told myself I didn't have time and I kind of questioned how important it was. And I honestly, I didn't know how to get started. I didn't know how to network because in my mind, I thought networking was just going to networking events and trying to meet new people, shake a bunch of hands and pat people on the back and make a bunch of small talk and things that I just really, really don't like to do as an introvert. That's what I thought networking was. That's what I thought you did. I had never heard of anybody doing it any differently. And I didn't do it. That was my excuse. I said I didn't like it. I said I didn't want to network, which meant I never went and networked. And I regret that. It, it, it was something that came. I came to regret later on. But luckily, I got fired from my job. I say luckily because it really opened my eyes to how important networking was. I also learned a different way to do it. And when I learned how to network, I realized how important it was. It was critically important for me to find my next job. As I was going through my process of networking, again, you, you remember what I thought networking was and I didn't like to do it. I learned that there's another way to network. There wasn't anybody that was around at the time, or at least anybody that I could find or had heard of that talked about networking in a different way. If I would have looked up how to network online, it would have said, pick the right event, go with a friend, come up with an elevator pitch, make sure you make small talk, talk to people, give them your business card, follow up, something like that. I didn't have anybody that was saying anything like, hey, you can connect online with people and then meet with them offline and, and you can have one-on-one -on -one conversations and you can give things to other people and help them out so that you don't feel awkward asking them for help. Nobody was around saying that. And if they were, I just didn't know who they were. I, I, I couldn't find them. So as I had to figure it out, I learned you could do something different. And that's why I do this newsletter and the podcast, and that's why I post on LinkedIn every day, is to hopefully help one person come up with a new strategy to network. I'm hoping there's one person out there who is in the same position I was or feeling the same way I was, and that I can be that person to show them a different way to network so that they don't have to say, I'll do it later, and ultimately find out that you know they've never been networking and now that they're looking for a job or they really need to connect with somebody for an opportunity, they, they're not really sure how to do it. I think one of the hardest parts about networking is getting started. It's actually the hardest part about doing anything really is, is the getting started. That where do I go? What do I do? How do I do it? 
it, it's easy to, to read a bunch of information on it and consume a bunch of information, but actually doing it is, is the hard part. And I find that anytime I face resistance getting started with anything, I try to think what is the very first step I need to take? What is that one thing I need to do? Then I think, how can I make that first step easier? What's the easiest first step that I can take? That's how I try to get started whenever I'm doing something. And for networking, for most people, the first step is connecting with other people. I know that sounds like that's all networking is, but figuring out who to connect with and getting in touch with them is that first step. So how can you make that first step easier? How can you take the very first step you need to take and then make it easier? I believe the easiest way to start connecting with people is to start with who you know. Start with who you have already met and know. Now, a lot of people will say to me, Greg, that doesn't seem like networking. I already know them, they're in my network. And that's true, they are in your network. The reality is you have a network, whether you know it or not. You have people that you could reach out to and connect with. And how did you meet all those people? You met them by working with them, going to school with them. They might have lived in your neighborhood. People who are near you, close to you, are the people that you meet. Those are the people already in your network. The other people who are in your network are people who were introduced to you by somebody you already knew. So listen when I said by somebody you already knew. So it stands to reason that if you want to go meet new people, start by talking to the people you already know, and eventually they can introduce you to somebody new. That's how we meet new people. Let's go back and talk about connecting with those people you already know. The question becomes, who should you reach out to? And and why is that easier? Let's first let's talk about why it's easier to reach out to people you already know. Of course, these are kind of obvious, but I, I think it's worth talking about. The people you already know are very low risk to reach out to. You already know them. They know your name. You're not a stranger. If you were to send them a note, an email, a message on LinkedIn, or call them or send them a text, they would probably respond because you already know them. It's very low risk. They're not likely to ignore you or reject you or say, hey, I don't want to talk to you, which is po possibly the case if you just reach out to somebody on a cold call or cold email. These people already kind of know you. They'll at least get back to you. They'll at least talk to you. And if you can have a conversation with them, you don't have to establish a level of trust. There's already a bit of level of trust there. So that's what makes these people the easiest people to start with whenever you're networking. And that's why I always tell people, start with who you know, because that takes away the anxiety of meeting strangers or going to a big event with a big room full of people you don't know and having to break the ice and make small talk and do all those things that most of us don't like to do. So who, what are a couple of ways that you can think about who you know? Because when I say, who do you know, that's, that's a really big list. So here's a couple situations, a couple recommendations, three ways to sit down and think about who you already know and who you might start with. And the first one is what I call first five. The first five people you would get in touch with if you were to lose your job today. So immediate family excluded. Who are the first five people you would call or text or email to tell them that you had lost your job today? That is probably the people you know best. And that might be friends and that's okay. It might be extended family, that's okay. But write down the first five people. That's a good place to start. Now you've got five people you could reach out to and start talking to. Five people in your network, five people you already know, five low risk contacts to make. If you want to move beyond that, and you probably should, if you can come up with five very easily, go through your resume or your LinkedIn profile, which will list the places you've worked because you wrote those places down as your experience or places you worked and look at those names of those companies and think about who were the people you worked with. 
And you can either do this just sitting there thinking about it, or you can actually do this through LinkedIn by going and searching for the name of your company and then looking at the connections that worked at that company or who are still at that company or who maybe have moved on to other companies. There's a couple of different ways to filter on LinkedIn to do that. And I've talked about that in my how to use LinkedIn to network posts um, that I'll link to in, in the, the newsletter. Uh, but those were, I think, um, issues 9, 10, and 11 of my newsletter. So go back through there and search for people that you worked with. Because again, these are coworkers and they know what you can do and they know how you work. And, and those are great people to reestablish contact with because you probably haven't talked to them in a while. And after you've got a few people there, think of the people around you. Who do you interact with? Who do you see? Who are your neighbors? Who's your extended family? Who are your friends? People at community organizations, churches, or other religious organizations. Where do you go? Where do you interact with people? Who's there and who could you talk to? Now, some of those people may not be very well connected to you and they may not be the people that you normally would reach out to. But I think if you start thinking about it, you'd find one or two people that you could connect with. And as you start to think about who you connect, could connect with, think about the easiest way to get in touch with those people and start a conversation. Hopefully that helps break it down a little bit. That's when people say, I don't know where to start. That's what I tell them. This is where I direct them. These are the first few things I tell them to do because this is a pretty easy, straightforward way to get started if you don't know what to do. Now, there's a lot more to this. And I talk about this all the time in the podcast, in the newsletter, in my posts on LinkedIn. I talk about all the different stages of how to network because it can get overwhelming and it can be huh, when you start thinking of all the steps and all the things you need to do and how to grow a, a, a vibrant professional network, it can get a little overwhelming. But for right now, this week, I want you to just focus on getting three or five people that you could contact, get back in touch with start to have a conversation with, and that's going to get you started. And once you get started, you're going to build momentum. And as you build momentum, this is going to feel easier and it's going to feel like you're making progress. I hope that helps. Have a great week. Good luck connecting with those people. I would love to hear in the comments here on the podcast or in the newsletter how you're doing, what you're struggling with. And as always, I'm here to help. Have a great week.